Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Now today I'm doing a video all about my eating disorder. So this is going to be a very long video and a hard video to film. I'm really nervous. I do have all my notes on my phone because it is a long, long story and yeah, I'm very nervous about it. I can't believe I'm finally making it. I'm just a bit like, I can feel my heart pounding um, in my chest. So I think I'll start from the beginning. So my eating disorder, I have anorexia nervosa. So right at the beginning, I had cancer when I was 12 years old and I was put on steroids. And with the steroids, I gained a lot of weight very fast. So my face went very round. Um, it was more like a moon face. I just, I ballooned. I just gained a lot of weight very, very quickly in a short space of time because of the steroids. Now, after I was put in remission from cancer in 2011, I then had a lot of problems with my mobility. So I was not able to exercise to lose the weight. I wasn't able to walk that much. I wasn't able to do any of the things that maybe would help me lose a little bit of the weight to get back into a healthy weight range. So I was stuck with, you know, the weight gain that I had put on from the steroids for quite a few years. And my my mobility got better and my medical problems got better as well, like exercising in 2015. Now in 2015, we had a lot of family related problems go on and a lot, a lot of things go on in the family that were very stressful. And in that time, I turned to food and exercise to control it. So I was very controlling about how much exercise I did every day. I was very controlling about how much food I had and the intake, not eat more than I would burn off. So I was having smoothies for breakfast and lunch. I was having um, really like chicken and rice and that kind of thing. Just really, really like healthy foods that... Um, or, health, or foods that I class as healthy because I wouldn't let myself eat anything except for that. So that all started in about September of 2015. And in that time, I also turned to laxatives. So I started using laxatives excessively every single day. At that time, I was on one um, called Dolcolax and it was a liquid tablet. You can get it in liquids it was a liquid you can get it in tablets as well but i had the liquid form um and i turned to that now my mum found out in about december of 2015 she found out that i was using laxatives to lose weight um so they were taken away from me but i was sneaky enough to find where she'd hidden them and i went back to using them so I have ne I was never off laxatives for years. I was using in this time I was given NHS counselling. So I was given counselling for the eating disorder, but I was never diagnosed with the eating disorder. They count gave me counselling for depression and anxiety. Um, they said that I wasn't ill enough to. They said I wasn't ill enough to be diagnosed with an eating disorder. Basically, so I was given NHS counselling, which wasn't particularly helpful not because of the nhs but just because of the people that i had didn't really understand my situation and didn't really understand my background and um i felt very alone in this time and my mum was amazing but i just felt very alone and i felt very on my own and like i had to battle this without anyone really knowing what was going on so this went on till about November of 2016 and this is when I turned to exercise um, even more and my exercise routines just went up and I was exercising a lot more, I was eating a lot less and I was still abusing laxatives because I was still finding out where they were or I was going to the shop myself and buying them. So I was still in laxatives, I was still dependent on laxatives and I um, yeah, was just eating less and exercising a whole lot more. So this had, it took about a year for me to, you know, it it was about a year that I um, went downhill really, really, really fast. And I then got even more NHS counselling. Um,
This went on for a good two years because I wasn't admitted to my first hospital until uh, until April of 2018. So for two years, I had to struggle in silence and I had to struggle on my own or just the help of my mum. And it was the hardest thing ever because I just felt so lonely. I felt like no one was listening to me. I felt like nobody understood what I was going through. And I just couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't do it. And my health declined really, really quickly um, to the point where in March of 2018, I was barely eating anything. I was eating, I would say, roughly 400 calories a day. So I was barely eating, I was exercising excessively. Um, once again, I was abusing laxatives. Um, and some of you may say like, well, how did you get them? Surely your mum found out. No, like I was so sneaky and I hate that I was that sneaky now, but I was sneaky and I would just go to the shop, buy them, take them, throw the wrappers away and act as if nothing had happened um so i yeah i was very very sneaky at that point because i, I then had a um assessment done um at springfield hospital in tutin it's an eating disorder unit but i had an assessment done you no know, for the outpatients when i got there after the assessment they said to me you're too ill you need to be an inpatient in two days so in the next Two days I was admitted into Springfield Hospital eating disorder units and that was the hardest thing ever, being away from my family for the first time, the realisation that this was happening but also the realisation that I was finally getting the help because I'd been asking for help for so long and I just never got any. So that was kind of like weird in a way because I felt relieved that I was getting the help but at the same time I didn't want to be an inpatient. Um, and I was kind of angry that it took so long for them to do something for me to become an inpatient. Um, so I was there for four months. I, you know, ate the meal plan. I stopped exercising. Um, I put on a little bit of weight. I got mentally a little bit better. But then as soon as I started to get a little bit better, I went back to the laxatives used the laxatives again and went downhill again so this time they thought right inpatient isn't working for you we're going to discharge you so in the july i was discharged and i went to outpatients and they said we're going to give you a chance in outpatients if you don't do it you'll be back in springfield so they gave me the three weeks i think to um prove that whether i could do it or not and in this time we did go away as a family just in the country but we did go away for a little holiday and I went downhill very very quickly I started abusing laxatives again I um, stopped eating I'd eat less I'd eat what I called healthy foods which was barely anything and I exercised so much and I just lost a lot of weight i went all the way back down again and i was, was admitted back to springfield hospital for the second time i was admitted back and this was august of 2018 so that was the three month admission um in that time i picked up pacing which was horrible I, I walked a marathon in one day just up and down my hospital room the steps that i would do were about 20 to 30,000 a day. Um, and then I was also on a feeding tube at this point because I wasn't eating the meal plan. So I was having a feeding tube and walking a whole lot. So my weight was not budging. And I was just really, really depressed and really, really low. And it was just awful. It was absolutely awful. I hate looking back on it because I don't like remembering that time. But I was just so depressed, I was so anxious, my eating disorder was through the roof. It was just the worst time I've ever had. I didn't wash, I didn't shower. Um, my mum would have to come to the hospital and shower me because I was just so depressed and too depressed to shower. My personal hygiene just was not good. I just was mentally in a really, really bad place. Um, but I started getting a little bit better. And I came out of that, they said, okay, you're not well enough really to be at home, but the inpatient still isn't working for you, so we're going to 
admit you to the day unit. So I went to the day unit and I was there for over Christmas. So I was there for November, December and January. So I was there for three months and my weight didn't budge. It went downhill again because I then again had more freedom. I went to the shops and I bought laxatives. So I can't believe I did it. I just, I feel so stupid now. Um, and it's just hard to remember because I just think like, why on earth did I do that to myself? Like, it was just, I was killing myself. I was absolutely killing myself. And in January of 2019, I was admitted back into Springfield Hospital for the third time because I was still not doing good at all and my mental health was really, really bad. I was so depressed again. Um, and they, I was too unwell to be in the day unit. I was too unwell to be at home. So they said I would either go to um, Scotland or I would go back to Springfield. And obviously Springfield is so much closer to my house. So I went there. So I went back to Springfield for the third time. And this time was really hard. Um, I found it really, really difficult to settle in. I was really lonely. I just really wasn't doing good. So after two months of that, they said to me, okay, you can go to, we're gonna transfer you to a different hospital. So I was transferred to a hospital called the Bethlehem Royal Hospital. And that was probably the best choice I've ever made. Um, I mean, I had really, really difficult times, but it was probably the best choice I made because it was helpful in a way where they had a lot more occupational therapy, they had a lot more therapy, um, distractions, so it was just, it was helpful in a way. But at the same time, I found it really hard and I did end up on a feeding tube twice in that admission. And that admission was a year long or 11 months. It was nearly a year. And um, I stopped exercising. I was still walking a lot, but I was walking more outside what staff knew about. I wasn't doing it in secret. I did struggle with my meal plan and I did struggle with weight gain and I did struggle with, you know, the whole eating disorder, but I did have struggles. I did have a lot of struggles there. Um, and I, it was the June, so a few months after being admitted and th things were going okay. And then I started using laxatives again and my weight plummeted this time. Um, I got really, really unwell and in the August of 2019 I was actually admitted into the general hospital because I just had messed up my stomach so, so bad. Um, I'd lost a lot of weight and I would faint every time I stood up. Um, my blood sugar levels were so low that I was having glucose all the time because my, they couldn't get my sugar levels up. Um, and it was just a nightmare, a real, real nightmare. And I then made a promise to myself that I would never, ever, ever touch laxatives again. And I can hand on my heart say that I've never touched them since. And that is something I'm really proud of. But at that time, I thought there was no way out. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna always live with this eating disorder. So there's no big difference if I take laxatives or not. Um, that's just how I felt and so I took them and I took it got to a point where I took the night I was admitted it was 101 tablets that night um, because I counted them all out so I took 101 tablets ended up in the hospital was severely ill nearly died and then they said you know, you've got to give it up, you can't do it anymore. And I just told myself that I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't put my family through this anymore. So I stopped. But because I stopped using that, I then, when I, when I went back to the Bethlehem, after my admission had finished at the general hospital when I was well enough, um, I did turn to self-harm. And I turned to self-harm, and no one really knows about this except for my family, but I, it was more about the control. I didn't have any control anymore. So I needed to control something. So the only thing that I could control was self-harm. 
and this was in the sense that I would like punch the wall so I never cut myself I never did anything like that but I would just punch the wall I've got a scar on my hand because I cut like my hand um and I would just punch the wall and I just my arms were so bruised and swollen and they I was, had so many trips to the hospital thinking we had broken a, I had broken a bone and I never did but they said to me my soft tissue damage was worse than a broken bone that I'd done because I'd hurt my arms so much. Um, so that only lasted a couple of weeks and then I just snapped out of it. I realised I couldn't be doing this anymore. It was horrible, it was up, making me more depressed and I just thought, you know what, this is it. And for some reason, I got a text that night from my stepdad and he just told me that I basically needed to figure things out because we couldn't go on like this. So I did. I snapped out of it. I gained control of my eating disorder. I started putting on a bit of weight. I was happier. I um, was told that I was moving to this unit like in December I was told I was moving here and I moved here January 6th so I'm down in Ipswich now at Eating Disorder Unit and it's the best, best place I've ever been. Um, I've made the most progress ever. I mean I'm back on YouTube which years ago, not even years ago, months ago I thought I would never even be because I thought I wasn't even going to survive this. I mean in August it was like close to death so I thought you know what I'm never going to come back from this and I did. I came back from it and um, um, I'm here now talking to you all because there was a point when I thought I'm never going to come back from this, I'm going to die from this eating disorder and it's going to take my life and there's nothing I can do about it but I came back from it and I'm, you know, you can get back from it, you can gain control of your life, you can do this I thought I would die from laxatives, I honestly thought I would die from laxatives because I use them so much I mean, I do have stomach issues, but I use them so much, I abuse them, I um, overdosed, and I self-harmed, and I just thought I would never, ever, 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 ever be well enough to do this, or be well enough to even get better in the first place. I thought I would just always be ill, and I thought I'd always be sick, and I thought, if I'm not sick, I'm going to die from it. That's just totally what I believed, but I didn't. I'm here now. I am um, making progress, um, I'm happy, I'm healthier, happy, I'm healthier and I'm so happy that I get to make videos for you and spread awareness about this because it's not nice at all, um, it's really really horrible um, mental illness and I just want you guys to be able to get through it, I want you guys to be able to get through whatever you're going through. So I'm always here if you need me. That's my eating disorder story. I'm now in a unit down in Ipswich doing much better. And yes, it's been five years. But if I can get through it, you can get through it. And we can get through it together. So leave a comment down below any questions you have. And I'll definitely answer them for you. Or any video ideas because I'll definitely do that too. Um, about mental health, about my experience, about feeding tubes, about anorexia, um, body image anything like that i'll answer so hit the thumbs up button subscribe and comment and i will see you in my next video bye guys